Hello, and thank you for joining me here at Film Pro Productivity. Each week, I'll be introducing concepts that film professionals and other creatives can use to make life easier and avoid creative burnout. I'll also present time management and lifestyle hacks for a more focused, effective, and happy life. My name is Carter Ferguson, and this is Episode 3, Prioritising. In this week's show, I will be looking at how to prioritise your tasks and gain the clarity of mind that will allow you to move forward. Before we start, though, have you been actioning the word no from last week's episode? How have you been getting on? I started with no for good reason. It's going to stop you from sliding down whatever slippery slope you find yourself on or whatever time-consuming rabbit hole you find yourself in. This week's topic is prioritising because saying no to the wrong things means that you can start saying yes to the right. And saying no liberates you from non-essential commitments and makes much more room for you to say yes to what is meaningful and important. It opens up free time by giving you choices. No being one that will stop the influx of new commitments. Maybe which will buy you time to think about a possible commitment. And yes, which comes from knowing that that commitment is something that furthers your goals and is something you really want to do. Or perhaps it's just something that pays the bills. But how can you decide what's important and what is not? I nearly called this episode White Noise and How to Navigate Through It, or words to that effect, as that's often how I feel when I get bogged down uh, in my things to do list. That's a foggy, buzzy place where I get lost and sometimes I find myself obsessing over things which, when all are said and done, just aren't important. And that fog, no matter how driven you are, can drop down and, in productivity terms at least, hide from you what is important and cause you to slow down and meander into a rhythm of unproductiveness. About a year or so ago, I picked up six retro VHS camcorders uh, or from eBay from a college that was getting rid of them. I had uh, them sent to me and it was about £200 and I had a plan for them. I was going to give them to fellow filmmakers and, yeah, do this cool... Let's all make a film on VHS and I'll give you a prize at the end of it. You can keep the camcorder and, you know, I was going to give them a tape and the means to capture them. All in it would have cost about £250, £260 and it just sounded like a great idea, right? Yeah? What a brilliant idea! Wrong. I ended up chewing over how I would do this for months and I was... It was always on my mind. I had a ton of other far, far, far more important things to do. Fight contracts that required constant attention, relationships. I'd just got a puppy. I had my own films I was trying to develop and a load of house-related problems and personal matters that needed needed my time. When I stopped for a moment and looked at what I had on my to-do list, it was probably six months later and I was drowning. Within two minutes of assessing what I had to do, I realised at last that I had to dump this camcorder idea. As I stopped and took stock, I I realised it was a total waste of time and money. I mean, if I'd been a millionaire playboy with plenty of free time, maybe I could have done it with my friends one weekend, but I'm no millionaire. By eliminating this idea and not doing it, not doing it, I was able to save a load of money, save a load of hassle. I mean, communicating and organising an idea like that with other filmmakers, they're busy. Why would they even have time to do it? I'd also save a load of time. The project wouldn't take five minutes. It would have taken weeks and possibly months of the time I just didn't have. It would also free up my mind for more important things. And that's my point. Getting what's on your mind onto paper or onto a whiteboard, as that's my preferred medium, allows you to honestly assess what is important and what is not. My time-consuming, altruistic camcorder idea, which would ultimately have led to me giving away those camcorders, just didn't fit with what I was about at the time. I only realised that, though, when I stopped and assessed all that I had in my mind. Prioritising starts with what I call a brain dump. Get a whiteboard or just a piece of paper, but whiteboards are pretty cheap these days, and and they give you a good chance of of, of working things out uh, in that sort of large-scale format. I've actually got four large whiteboards, uh, three in my office and one at home for doing this sort of thing and, and for really working out anything. So get that whiteboard and dump whatever is on your mind onto it. Get it all out there, any incomplete task, anything that's on your mind and anything that is slowing you down. If you're using a whiteboard and run out of space, you can always photograph it, by the way, and type it up and, and start a new board. The act of getting everything out of your mind and onto a piece of paper or a whiteboard will start to make a difference to your mind. 
that working space in there that's been holding these ideas and worries starts to free up. That RAM or headspace can then be put to better use than remembering all these un- incomplete tasks. Just having that host of tasks in your head will actually tire you out. And there's research to back that up. In 1927, in fact, a Russian psychologist called Bluma Ziganik found that waiters remembered orders only as long as the order was in the process of being served. The waiters had better recollections of still unpaid and incomplete orders, but after the completion of the task, after everyone had paid, they were unable to remember any more details about them. This trick now is known as the Ziganik effect, and it's very well applied by soaps and cereals. The episode ends, but the story doesn't. Thus, you get stuck on a cliffhanger. Software designers do the same things with games. The point is, I suppose, that this is a thing. It's been understood for years, and it's something you can deal with. Once you've done the brain dump, and now that you have gotten these tasks out of your head and out of your short-term memory and onto a whiteboard or a piece of paper, you can apply one of several systems to help you to prioritise. My preferred system is Rory Vaden's Focus Funnel. And the way that works is if you can imagine a wide funnel at the top and getting tighter as it goes down, then you run your to-do list through this by asking a series of questions and this dilutes your list into a priority list at the bottom. And the first question that you want to ask yourself is what can I eliminate? What can I get rid of? For me, it was, amongst other things, the camcorder scenario. That was an incomplete task or loop in my head and it took up space for no good reason. I'm sure when you look at your own list, you'll immediately be able to recognise things that just shouldn't be on your mind at all. Get rid of them. And the second question is, what can I automate? I automate a buffered tweet every day at 12.05. I automate some email responses And I automate my grocery shop. I pay a fiver a month and uh, um, that allows for as many deliveries as I I want, providing the delivery is over £30. And I just log into the previous grocery shop, make a few changes and hit pay and then that's delivered to me the next day and that probably saves me about two hours a week, by the way. And the next question you want to ask yourself is what can I delegate? For me, the one vital thing that I delegate every day is a dog walk at 11am. The dog goes away for about two hours, I pay £7, but that allows me time to get to the gym or get to an important meeting without a dog in tow. And the final question that you want to ask yourself is what can I procrastinate on? What can I deliberately procrastinate on? What can I put off till tomorrow or next week or next month? What is not important right now? Put it onto tomorrow's to tomorrow's list. Put it onto tomorrow's focus funnel and ask yourself the question again. And if you ask yourself all of these questions, it'll leave you with what you can concentrate on. It's the dilution of what is important. It's what you should be prioritising. So my call to action for next week is to get that white noise out of your head and onto a piece of paper or a whiteboard. Apply the focus funnel, which I'm going to include as a diagram in the show notes, and you'll soon get back control. Remember that you're driving the bus, not some unimportant commitment or incomplete task. Stephen Covey has a great quote. He says, the key is not to prioritise what's on your schedule, but to schedule your priorities. And I think that Rory Vaden's focus funnel will allow you to do just that. Thanks again for listening. I'm a great mental health advocate and as a result, next episode, I'm going to be talking about Alive, which is a -a five-a-day system for good mental health. In the meantime, good luck in the week ahead, take control of your own destiny, keep on shooting and join me next time on Film Pro Productivity. The music you're listening to is Adventures by Ehumitsu. You can read and review the show notes for this episode on the official website at filmproproductivity.com. If you're struggling with something you think I can help with or would like to tell me how you're getting on, then please get in touch via the contact page on the website. Alternately, you can get me on Twitter at fight underscore director or follow the show at filmproprodpod. Please subscribe on the podcast app of your choice and if you're in a caring sharing mood, then I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave an awesome review.